So I will start the presentation of the code discussing the uh, interface for uh, the shortest path. Basically giving a graph, which is an undirected graph and the source index, uh, we want to be able to compute if the source index has a path to a given index and return true or false if there is such a path. And uh, if there is such a path, we we'll like to get the path as an array of uh, integers for now. It's a fast version to, to get the entire path. So this is the interface and uh, we'll discuss how we implement this interface, both using depth for search and breadth for search. So that's, uh, that's what uh, we'll do next. So using the depth for search, like uh, we, uh, we did the connected graphs, uh, we'll have the following uh, implementation. Now, uh, the data structure, sure, we need to keep the graph, we need to keep the source index, and uh, we like to uh, have the, uh, elements through which we reach a node, the size or length of the path to that node. And we'll also keep the marked Boolean array. Now, uh, this data structure can be improved, but I kept it like this just to, to be consistent with uh, uh, what we did before and to be easier to understand. It's not the optimal way to, to represent. There are better ways, but this is the simplest way. Now, the constructor for uh, this day, for this class will receive a graph and the source index and will compute all the paths. And then you will have the ability to get uh, the results of the computations. Sure, we save the graph, we, sh we save the source index, check that the source index is valid and we initialize uh, three arrays and uh, we declare them based on the number of vertices of, uh, of the graph. They, they will have the size of, based on the number of vertices. And uh, for, for each vertex, we put uh, false. So it's not marked initially. And uh, we mark the uh, previous uh, element with minus one by convention is none. And the size we put zero for all elements because we haven't computed yet the size. Then we call the depth for search for the source index for, for our starting node. And uh, what we do, we do like we did the first method. Uh, we mark the current the vertex with true. Then we look at all the adjacent vertices and uh, we check if it's not marked, if it's not marked, it's first time when I arrive to that adjacent vertex, I will go there. Or if uh, the current path to that, so if it's marked, I already have a path there. But if the current path, it's bigger than the new path, and to compute the length, uh, the size of the new pest, I am looking how I arrive to VI, which is a pest to arrive to VI, and I add one because from VI to AI I have direct uh, direct edge, so I just need to add one. So if now I have a better pest, a shorter pest that is shorter than the previous uh, discovered pest, then means I still want to con even if it's marked this uh, this vertex, I still want to consider it. So how we consider a vertex in both situations? We uh, put that, uh, the, we arrive in that vertex, in, in the adjacent vertex through the, uh, our current vertex. And we update the length of or size of the path uh, by saying, okay, now I have this better path going through VI, so this is a new size. And then we call recursively depth first to process also the adjacent uh, vertex. So this is a, this is a method using depth first search, 
And sure, to get the graph, we get the graph. To get the source vertex, we, we get it. Now we have a path. If the shorter path length is greater than zero, you know, initialize everything with zero. If I put there a value greater than zero, means I have a path between our source uh, vertex and the vertex provided as parameter. And to get that pace, pass, if I have one, what I do, I initialize the result with uh, uh, the length uh, of the pass plus one, y plus one, because I, if I start from zero to one, I will put zero and one. The size is one. But I put I need to put in the solution both zero and one. So I always put more with one than the size. The size or length generally is the number of edges. So if I put uh, uh, one means I need to have two vertices to define that vertex. If I have two edges, I will need to have three vertices to create those two edges and so on. So that's why I put here plus one. And uh, then I go to from uh, the end to the beginning. So I go from the vertex to the beginning and I put the elements in the solution from right to left. Uh, and what I do, first of all, I put uh, the current vertex in, uh, in the result and then I look, okay, how I arrive here. So shortest pass through will give me how I arrive, uh, how I arrive here. And I go back from where I arrived so when I repeat the loop, I will do the same for the previous node. So I put the previous node in the result and I go back and I repeat this until I arrive to the source or I basically it's when my uh, element is going to the initial uh, uh, vertex. So after I constructed this array, I return it as the result. So this is a shorter space using the depth for search. Now, uh, we, we can fast test this, and the test is very similar with the test that uh, uh, we did for the, uh, we did for the uh, undirected graphs. So we, we follow the same structure of the test and we use a tiny, uh, graph that we use there as well, and it's present in the textbook. And what we want to see is to see the graph and also all the passes. And I consider not only the uh, zero or one, I take as a source pass all the uh, passes one by one. So this is basically uh, called several times a method to compute the shortest pass. So let's see what we got. Um, first, we'll have the pass from zero to all the elements. And these are the shortest pass computed from zero to all the elements. Then when we call again the method, uh, we'll get the pass from one to all the elements and so on. So, um, uh, as you can see here, uh, these are the, sure, if, an, if I don't have a pass, I didn't uh, put uh, at all that combination. Because look, when I discuss about pass from seven, I just have one pass to eight and from eight one to seven. And uh, when I look at pass from nine, I will just have uh, to 10, 11 and 12 uh, because the, the others are not uh, linked. So um, that's why I don't have so many things uh, printed just because I avoid to put, if, if there is no pass, I don't include that uh, element. Here is uh, the test. I must have a pass to show the solution. Uh, okay, so this was, uh, uh, actually this was a breast first. I, this is a test for depth first. Sorry, I presented you the wrong test. Very similar with the other one. It's just that uh, I put here shorter space 
that's for search. Um, uh, while the other one was testing the breast per search. And sure, the same results independent of the method, but this is a correct one. The difference between them is just the shortest press class that I use, uh, if it's depth for search or if it's press for search. That's the only change between these two files. Now, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll have. I will, I will uh, include now also the discussion for the shorter pass for the breast first search, uh, just to have it because it's required in, uh, in the homework. And um, the same data structure, so I didn't change the data structure and the same initialization just at the end, we will call the breast for search for the search index. Now the processing it's changed because now I no longer have a recursive procedure. I just have an iterative procedure using a queue. A queue of unprocessed um, vertices. And uh, initially I put in the queue, the source index and I mark the source index at visit. Now, while my queue is not empty and sure initially will not be empty because I just added the source index in it, I will take the next vertex from the queue and for each, and uh, you, you can use any type of queue. Here I use a dynamic capacity queue, but you see, it doesn't matter. You can use a linked list, you can use a fixed capacity and put the capacity very high so it will not, uh, if you put, uh, for instance, this capacity is a number of vertices, you will be safe. So you can use any type of queue. You, you don't need to use dynamic capacity queue, but uh, they will work in a similar way. Now, how we process the elements that we took, we take all the adjacent vertices and look, if Z vertex, uh, adjacent vertex is not yet visited, that means, okay, I need to process this one. So I will mark uh, the vertex as visited. I update the size of the path and I say, okay, to arrive in this adjacent vertex, I will come, come from my uh, current vertex. So I'll come to this through VI. And uh, then, because now this is a new vertex that I need to consider, I will edit at the end of the queue. So after I look in all the queue, I'll come back to this to look at this adjacent vertex. Now, uh, and sure, I repeat this until I finish all the elements in my queue, after I go through all the, elements that needs to be visited and I visit each of them. So uh, this is the only, it's basically the algorithm that I already executed by hand, it's uh, expressed in Java. Now, uh, all the other method, uh, methods are very similar because I get the graph, the source index, the shorter path, and I get the path in the same way constructing a result uh, going from the last element towards the source element. So nothing else will change uh, except the breadfirst bre method that is different. This is an iterative method and it's uh, uh, much more efficient than the, than the other one. Okay, I will stop the recording here.